Boo this man, he's trying to ruin my business right now. Aloha friends and family, we've got a different video for you today. We're gonna to be talking with Chad Brown at Ship Reptiles here in a minute. We're gonna be getting as much information as possible to pass on to you guys when it comes to shipping reptiles currently. There's always a risk when shipping reptiles, even in the best of times. We know that. My goal here is to give people as much information as possible to make the most informed decision when it comes to shipping those reptiles. I have currently been holding on to reptiles that I've sold just to just keep them safe. To me, right now is all like Christmas time when there's a lot of packages being shipped around and they're understaffed and, and I know that myself, along with many other breeders, choose not to ship during those times because of the added risk that's there. You know, there's many factors that go into it. If you're not making those sales, there's a lot of people out there whose, you know, families need to be fed by making these, these sales. I, I would say that it would be great if a lot of customers would be open to the idea of waiting to ship, but this video is not to condemn anybody for shipping reptiles right now whatsoever. That's not what it's about. I, I had a conversation with Garrett on a live stream the other day, so it kind of got the ball rolling on, on this idea. And I just wanted everybody to have as much information as possible, and Chad is very knowledgeable. It is added straight on anybody's business to hold on to animals for longer than you would need to, you know, to hold on. I've only got six that I'm holding back. It's really not that big a deal. If somebody's got 200 animals that they're waiting to send out and they're holding them all back, your extra feeding costs, the bills go up exponentially. Are we concerned more about the animals or making money? That's, that's the question that comes down to. Luckily, there's lots of people out there that understand what's happening that are willing to still purchase animals and wait until it's safe to ship them. Now again, lots of animals are making it through. I'm not, the reason I'm getting chat on the phone is because I don't really know what I'm talking about here. Like it's just my own feelings and this is what I'm going off of is my gut as far as what I'm doing. So I figure we get chat on the line. We have the most informed discussion possible. I've got some, what I think are good questions to ask him. And hopefully we all come w away with this with a lot more information than we had before this video started. For me, it seems like it's uh, kind of like Christmas time. And I was, so I have animals I'm waiting to ship, but I, I feel you guys probably would stand to lose the most. If people all across the country stop shipping the reptiles like completely, then you guys would be hit the most. So that's why I thought that you would be the perfect person to have the, the exact kind of, you know, counter counterweight to the conversation. You know what I mean? Well, certainly, I, I certainly appreciate you, you know, including me in the conversation because it is a really interesting time in, in, in the shipping world. Um, it is, to your point, FedEx is calling it their, their peak season, so it mirrors what they would see during the holidays. So they're at their absolute peak as far as volume, but their, you know, their hubs, um, some of their facilities have been hit with the virus, so they're a little bit understaffed as well. So tremendous volume in the system staffing is not normally what it is and then around the country there's you know certain COVID-19 hotspots where there are some tremendous concerns for drivers and for FedEx personnel so definitely a, a bit of an odd time right now I know we're going to dive a little deeper into that and what that actually means um, so this this conversation that you and I are having I think is critically important uh, not just for the reptile world but we also have ship your aquatics for folks who do coral fragging and people who are clownfish breeders, they're subjected to these same uh, pressures that are on the FedEx system that, uh, you know, has done a, a tremendous job getting our animals from our breeding facility to their new future home. But now in this current time, there's a lot of information that you need to know. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I wanted to go through some basic stuff. So the so first question I had was, though, why would somebody want to ship through a company instead of shipping directly through FedEx in the first place? Well, that's a simple answer. Um, FedEx is, does a tremendous job at what they do. To take your package and you drop it off at six or seven o'clock at night and they'll have it you know, to where it's supposed to go by 10.30 the next morning, they're fantastic at that. They've got over 450,000 worldwide employees. But guess what? They don't have any reptile specialists. They don't have any aquatic specialists on their staff. So that's where we come in. We are able to provide you not just with a discounted label, which would save you money uh, if, if, instead of you going directly to FedEx and depending on the volume of your account, we can save you tremendous amounts of money if you're a repeated shipper. Uh, beyond the money savings, we are able to sell you specific packaging materials that are gonna allow your animals to travel as safely as possible. But the part I just mentioned a second ago, us being reptile and aquatics experts, we can tell you exactly what to do if you're a shipper in Florida and you're shipping from 90 degrees 
and you're going to South Dakota where it's 25 degrees and how to properly execute that shipment. You know, so whether you need a heat pack, whether you need a cool pack, whether, you know, your animal is maybe is just too sensitive to go for this time and you need to wait for better weather. So all those little outlying kind of things, as opposed to just, hey, it's 70 degrees where I am and it's 70 degrees where this animal's going, that should be an easy shipment. Most shipments don't go that easy. So there's temperature concerns, there's weather concerns. What if there's a, a storm in Memphis, which is FedEx's main hub? How long will my package be delayed? So there's all those reasons why you should rely on us to give you that expert advice that you could never ever get from FedEx. And you guys have a, a whole office of people that's kind of tracking everything all the time. Like you guys have a whole team that, that does all the tracking and stuff. Is that correct? Correct. So we have three customer service staffers here in office. Uh, we've got a, my director of uh, customer relations and customer accounts. Judy is in Texas, so she's not in office, but she's on the website every day, looking at the emails every single day. Plus I am. So there's five eyeballs looking at your shipments every single day. Plus our other staff that's kind of around the country does other pieces of our business. But uh, yeah, we are tracking your shipments and we are trying to give everybody the best advice we possibly can for whatever that current situation is. Do you wanna get a package out for Christmas? Is it in the middle of a snowstorm? Are you shipping in the spring and you've got a possible 60 degree temperature from where you're shipping from to where the animal's going to and you need some expert advice? Yeah, and I, and I mostly ask that question for you know anybody who maybe has not heard of Ship Your Reptiles or, or is unaware of any of this, because I've always used Ship Your Reptiles and I've always been highly impressed with the amount of information on your guys' site. It's almost overwhelming, overwhelming the amount of information that's on the Ship Your Reptiles website. If anybody has any questions about shipping, I always say, like, go look at that website. There's more information that you could possibly ever even want about shipping animals. Um, so... And, and when I was checking that out, I, I know that you guys use FedEx and I, I understand that most people do. I actually went and did a little research to see what other reptile shipping companies are doing. You know, I assumed they use FedEx, so I went to go look more deeply. I even called uh, Superior because I know shipping isn't their main thing. They're more, more supplies, but I still called to see if they're using FedEx and if they're offering like an insurance aside from what FedEx would have been offering if they weren't going through this. And everybody came back with the exact same answer. So. Are there any reptile companies that you know of that, that ship that don't utilize FedEx or is FedEx pretty much it? Well, you can have a UPS account if you are an individual breeder. Really? Uh, UPS's, you know, bylaw says that snakes are prohibited in their system. So you know, there's a few turtle folks and lizard folks who ship with, with UPS. So there's some large companies, large reptile breeders who do ship with UPS and they've got an exemption around that prohibition for snakes in the system. Uh, but there are no third party shippers and our model is third party. I don't actually put my hands on your box or your animal. You ship it as Brian to your customer, Chad in Colorado. That's that models third party shipping. And so there's, this, UPS does not allow third party reptile shipping gotcha. as it stands currently. We started our company with UPS, but we moved over to FedEx because FedEx didn't have as many regulatory hurdles to jump through. And let me add one more thing as to why someone would ship with us. I forgot to mention our insurance program, which you kind of touched on a second ago. We have a self-funded insurance program. Once you have a live account with FedEx, FedEx assumes absolutely no responsibility. It's kind of ridiculous that, you know, just because there's a snake in a box as opposed to a sweater for grandma's birthday, that suddenly I have no, FedEx no longer has any liability for that shipment, but that's the way they structure all their live accounts whether it's aquatics or whether it's reptiles. So we have a self-funded insurance program where you know, we offer the insurance. You can, you can buy $100 of coverage for $2.50 and you can buy as much coverage as you would need to cover your particular animal. And we have shipped $35,000 Galapagos tortoises for zoos. We've shipped albino alligators for those folks who need albino alligators shipped and insured them for lots and lots of money because they were very concerned about them uh, arriving safely. Uh, that's another reason to ship with us because we can insure your animal, your, your shipment for on-time arrival, but we can also insure the value of your animals as well. So it's not FedEx that was ever offering the insurance. It was, it was you guys. And the reason you guys have repealed your insurance currently is because FedEx has stopped their on-time arrival guarantees at the moment. Is that, is that accurate? Well, you know, being a self-funded program, if there are unfortunately too many claims and the system is operating outside of its normal uh, ratios, then uh, that self-funded insurance program would quickly, you know, cost us a, a lot of money. 
Um, we do pay claims all the time for packages being late. And occasionally when there is a DOA, we do pay out those claims as, as well. Uh, but currently, yes, we have our insurance off because there's an increased number of delays in the system. And if we were to offer our on-time arrival insurance, uh, unfortunately, it, it would just cost us too much money. So there's a little bit of a decline in performance in the FedEx system right. that makes us uncomfortable offering that. We will open that insurance program up as soon as we possibly can. But as for now, um, we're seeing such an increased number of delays that uh, it doesn't make it financially wise for us to offer that program right now. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, we were. Um, that's interesting. My my buddy Garrett and I were having a conversation um, on on a live stream recently, which is kind of what led to this. And he was talking to me about like maybe if somebody started an insurance thing right now uh, that they self funded, it would maybe do well, kind of like the house always wins type of thing. Like if you, I, I mean, obviously you have too many claims and it doesn't work out, but just the standard way that insurance usually works, you know, a lot of people pay in and only a, a handful of people ever really need to use it. So you, but but maybe not, huh? I mean, obviously that's not the route you guys took. <laughs> Well, you know, normally FedEx offers, operates under a 2% late ratio. So 100 packages go out, less than two of them are going to be late. That number has increased. And our insurance model was based on these long standing numbers that we've compiled over the years with FedEx and the FedEx have provided some information on uh, to, to, in order to have our program in a way, our insurance program in a way that doesn't you know, actually cost us money. We're not looking to make money on the insurance program. The, the point of that, that program is just to provide peace of mind to our customers when they need to send, send an animal out, whether it's, a, again, a $75,000 albino alligator, or it's just, hey, this is my mom, and she caught this turtle in her backyard when she was a kid, and now she needs to send it across the country when she moves across the country. She's had this turtle for 60 years, and the, the, the value to her is, is priceless, but I still would love to insure for some kind of dollar value if something were to happen to it. So we insure all the spectrum of animals and reasons why folks would want to insure an animal. But at this current time, with that late ratio being as, as uh, high as it is above the normal less than 2%, we just can't do that program and be financially sound. Right, right. It sounds like the other companies have done the same thing. I don't know anybody that's offering insurance right now on shipping. Um, and that's, that's why I haven't been shipping yet. I'm kind of waiting for it to go back. I've always insured with you guys every time I ship. When I had a $6,000 snake one time I shipped, I insured it for, for the full amount. And I was also impressed with the, the amount of attention I got because of that. Like I had some, somebody from your company called me and was like staying really on top of the ship and was like, make sure, you know, you call your person to make sure this is like, yeah, it was pretty good. That's why it makes me really comfortable to ship with the insurance in place. Um, okay, can I add on that? Yeah, we've got uh, an email alert system that lets us know when a high value insurance uh, order is purchased. Um, and we pay attention to every single shipment, but those high value shipments, number one, we wanna contact you just to be aware you know, that you have everything you need in place because the last thing we want is for you to purchase that high value insurance and then for you to do something incorrect in the packaging department or something that would not be considered a FedEx issue or our issue, but would be your issue. I can't insure against you screwing up your packaging. Right? Right. That's not how the insurance works. Insurance is in place in case FedEx screws up and your animal does not get, on, get put on the, the right plane. And now it goes to Memphis instead of Texas. And now it's stuck there for a couple of days. and doesn't get to where it's supposed to go. That's what the point of the insurance is in case FedEx accidentally runs over it with a forklift. These things are incredibly rare that I'm listing out. But unfortunately, they do happen. So that's why the program is in place. But we contact everybody who does a high value insurance just to make sure they have all their ducks in a row to make sure that it's just that shipment is, is as successful as possible. Right. And there's always a risk, right? Anytime you're shipping an animal, anytime you're doing anything, there's always risk involved with everything you do, right? There is. And we try to minimize that as much as possible. Right, right, right. Um, do you guys keep records of every shipment? We do. We do. We, we've got a giant database within our admin system. So if you set up an account with us, number one, you'll have a record of all your shipping, you know, who you ship from, who you, you know, well, I guess you would be shipping, but where you ship from, uh, who you ship to, uh, the tracking numbers, the order numbers within our system. Um, if you purchase supplies from us, that will also be under your account. So we've got this tremendous database of shipping history going back almost a decade. 
Um, so if you want to know something about your account, chances are we can pull it up instantly and let you know, yeah, that shipment you did three years ago, yeah, we got that right here. So with that information, do you, are you able to say how many shipments have been delayed since the onset of COVID? Well, it, our system, you know, doesn't get the delays from FedEx. So once FedEx sends out their weekly batch of, of, of billing, they send us this giant digital file. We are able to comb through that and, and specifically look for delays. But there's a difference in there's different categories of delays. One, one would be same day late versus next day late. So same day late, if it's supposed to be there by 1030 and it shows up at 1031, that it's technically late. is same day late, but that does not affect the health of the animal. It really doesn't make that much difference to the animal itself. It makes it to you and your customer. And if you insured it for on-time arrival and it's one minute late, we will, we will pay for the, that shipment for you. Um, but it's once it moves into next day late is where we start seeing DOAs and animal health issues come up. Uh, reptiles are extremely hardy and actually ideally suited for this type of shipping. Aquatics function really well, but because it goes into a bag with water and there's a limited amount of oxygen in that bag, once we get close to 40 hours with aquatics, we're getting pretty close to the end of the oxygen supply within those bags. So uh, the next day late for aquatics can be really, really detrimental. Um, I don't have a, exact numbers of the next day late because they kind of get compiled in with the same day late, um, but we are seeing increased numbers with both. And for FedEx to normally operate under 2%, we're probably closer to four or 5% right now. Okay. Why that may not seem significant, um, that's over double the amount of late packages, uh, which means now we have double the amount of calls into FedEx trying to source where that package is. So, and we're not the only ones calling FedEx. So when something is late, it's more than just the late package itself. It's the increased demand upon the FedEx one call system, which is the level of customer service that we have because of the volume of our account, we get the highest level of customer service. Well, all those customers are now calling FedEx trying to figure what that is. So it takes additional time just to get on the phone with FedEx and it takes additional time now for FedEx to source out what the issue is. So when the amount of late shipments double as we're seeing, it takes not just two times, but three or four times the amount of time to track all that information down. So the strain on the system begins to strain our ability to do customer service in a smooth, efficient way. Totally. Maybe to put some perspective on that percentage number, how many shipments do you guys on an average in a regular month, like is there an average number of shipments that you guys would do in a month? Oh gosh, we're probably this time of year close to 10,000 a month. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. That's so that makes that percentage number go up a little more when you think about it. Um, Oh, uh, so uh, I, I had a question here. Was, is this situation similar to holidays? You already answered it. It, it, it is kind of right now is similar to say Christmas time shipping. You would say as far as like the amount of risk out there and it is, it is now it's different because it, obviously holiday time, Christmas time, most of the country is pretty cold. So there's, there's that issue. Now, of course, now we're in the spring where there's the difference in temperature issue. So uh, same amount of volume in the system, same difficulty getting, you know, uh, customer service done with FedEx. Um, but around holiday time, particularly after around Thanksgiving, when those Black uh, Friday sales start and about a, two weeks before Christmas, there's such an increased volume in the, in the system that we recommend folks don't ship. Um, we are not seeing that amount of late packages just late, just, just yet. Uh, around Christmas time, there can be 10 plus percent of packages are going to be late. And if that is such a, it's such a high number, it's just not healthy or safe or wise to ship your animals. We're still seeing it now where given, you know, your animal's not overly sensitive, uh, given, you know, your animal is properly packaged and going to an area where it could possibly deal with a next day delivery, we're still advising folks it's okay to ship. All right. Well, that, uh, that kind of answers my next question as well though my last question was was the one i would think would be most difficult for you was even though it may sh hurt ship your reptiles income uh, would you recommend that people consider waiting until fedex reinstates the on-time arrival and the insurance kicks back in uh before they consider shipping again or at least consider that 
Well, I, I think each shipment needs to go on a case by case basis. You're shipping out a, a, a Parsons chameleon. Uh, now's probably not the time to do it. Um, you're shipping out a ball python, which are super hardy and tolerate shipping really well. Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, are you shipping from, you know, Missouri to Kansas or, you know, M Missouri to North Carolina where, where weather is roughly the same? Again, you're going to be fine. But if you're going from the southern tip of Florida, where it could be in the high 80s or I think uh, next week it may be in the possible the low 90s, up to the northern parts of the country where it's still in, in some days having some winter-like conditions, uh, because of the delays, that might not be the best time to, to do it. So it's always going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. But if you've got some time-sensitive animals, some sensitive overall to shipping animals, um, then I'm going to say it's probably best to wait. Um, and part of that is the delays in the system, but also because of the, the varying weather conditions across the country. And it's very difficult to, you know, just say, hey, it's cold, use a heat pack, or it's really warm, use a cold pack. Because again, you could be 60 degrees apart from your destination from where you're shipping it from. Um, and then once we add the 24 hour possible delay in that, um, that could be detrimental to your animal. So overall shipping is still safe, but I would say that top 10 or 15% of sensitive animals, frogs, uh, certain species of chameleons, um, some, some lizards like say a bronia that like it really cold or, uh, in the aquatics hobby, fish. Fish consume oxygen at a much higher rate than corals do. So fish just have a, a shorter life of, uh, of shelf life in that bag of water. And a 24 hour delay for that fish could not turn out very well. So it may be time to ask your customer, can we do this later on once the system is operating at a more normal pace? Awesome. That's that's a that's a good way to put it. I didn't even think about that side of it because I I only ever ship snakes and they are probably some of the hardier species. You know all the all the different snake species that I ship. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's good information right there, man. Yeah, boas, pythons, you know, corn snakes, the, the you know bearded dragons, you know, a bulk of the you know top ten animals that that make up the reptile hobby and most of the shipments that we see do fine. Leopard geckos, unfortunately, can be a little temperature sensitive. So, uh, you know, if you're going, if you're shipping out leopard geckos and you've got a, a wide range of temperatures from where you're shipping from to where you're shipping to, it may be time to, to hold off. Crested geckos can be the same way. Um, but uh, again, you know, your, your ball python, your, your carpet python, your bearded dragon, uh, I don't think we've had an issue with those since this whole COVID-19 has hit the shipping system and kind of thrown a monkey wrench in some of their on-time deliveries. Are there uh, any COVID spots that are like COVID? I'd like, I know New York is one. Are there any other spots that you would say are, are kind of more high risk to ship just because of their relation to COVID um, outbreaks? Yeah, I would say New York and New Jersey are certainly still issues. And because now we're asking a driver to get out of his truck and go into, say, an apartment building that could be crowded with a lot of people. A lot of drivers don't feel comfortable with that. Um, so now we're, with Apartments in heavily hit COVID areas, that's, I would recommend probably waiting until this thing calms down a bit because, you know, the drivers are told by FedEx that they have a concern about their own personal safety, then they can uh, bring that package back to the hub and ask you to pick it up. And sometimes there's a 20 to 48 hour delay before we can actually get that part executed. Um, and obviously with aquatics, that would be a tremendous issue. And for some sensitive reptiles, that can be an issue as well. Um, the hot spots are, are moving kind of slowly around the country, so I would recommend before you ship, check out the news, maybe do a quick Google search to see where the hot spots are. I know New Orleans was heavily hit uh, a, a week or so ago, and we were seeing some delays in shipping and deliveries there. Um, parts of Texas have been heavily hit. We're seeing some delays there. So as this virus moves around the country, it is really up to you as a shipper. We'll provide you with the most updated information that we can. Um, but it's up to you as a shipper to work with your customer or your recipient. So you guys are on the same page and you guys feel very comfortable with what you're doing. In the end, of course, I have a shipping company because I love to make money. There's no doubt about it. I mean, come on. But at the same time, I have an obligation to my customers, their recipients, and to the animals. I love reptiles. I do not want to see reptiles, you know, put into a situation where they're not going to arrive healthy or alive. So we have warnings up on our site. 
that go over in detail a number of the things that I've gone over. I would recommend reading those. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us or any shipping company you may be using to get the most updated information you possibly can so you can give your animals the best chance for success to arrive alive and healthy. Thank you, Chad, for doing this with us. Really appreciate it, man. Oh, I'm stoked to do it, man. Stoked to do it. You know, I think this is such an important and, and timely conversation that you and I are having here. I plan on sharing this, you know, widely with all my friends and, you know, anybody watching this show, you got somebody who's shipping reptiles or thinking about shipping reptiles uh, or even aquatics this time of year. Uh, I think you need to share this conversation with them because we can literally save reptile lives just by giving some people the proper information, how to execute this uh, shipping during this really strange time in our country. So if you're wondering why I was kind of chuckling at the end there, I accidentally called Chad Chris twice when I was saying goodbye to him. So we re-recorded it so that I didn't call him by the wrong name, which apparently he's been called wrong on national television live before. I mean, Chris, Chris Brown is a fairly uh, successful individual too. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I do, you know, the broadcasting for football uh, all the time. And obviously, you know, pronunciations is some of the more difficult names is one that that trips you up. But uh, one of my, my very, very first game I did, I was doing it for ESPN. And I was working with a partner who had been in the industry for 30 years. And so, you know, the, the open, when they, you know, they come to the game and, and at the very beginning, and it's the two broadcasters and they're shoulder to shoulder in the booth. And they, you know, coming to you from a historic Lambeau field, you know, that kind of thing, right? Um, so the guy's name is Joel Myers. He used to be the, the voice of the Lakers. Now he's the voice of the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. Um, but he was doing college football in the offseason. So uh, we, we do the first take of the Open. And it's my first game. I'm super nervous. And I'm like dripping sweats. And I like speed through it. And I'm talking super fast. So he turns to me after and he goes, well, we'll have to do that again. And you got to slow down, man. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got it. So we do the second one and I kill it. I, I slow down. I've I completely got my, my calm about me. He does a great job. They got some issues in the booth. And so they, couldn't, they didn't record it right. So but now we got to do the third time. But, you know, they, you, they don't want the national anthem playing in the background while you're doing the open. So we have to wait until the national anthem is over. We're going to do it live. So I'm like, oh, shit. Not only is this my first game, but I got to do it live. On national TV. On national TV, on ESPN. Are you kidding me? So, you know, I'm trying to get myself together and I'm fan of myself, trying not to be dripping sweat on my face. And, you know, we, we, do the, we do the open and we're getting to the end and Joel is going to sign off, you know, and take it to commercial. All right, so we're coming to you from Memphis Tiger Stadium and Chris Brown and I will be right back. And I was like, what the hell, man? You've been doing this for 35 years. You screwed my name up. <laughs> but we were live, so that's all we could do. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we're recording this one. So, yeah. Chad, Chad. Chad, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. For, I know your name. I've known it for a long time. I don't know why he wanted to go back to Chris. Thank you, Chad, for doing this with us. Really appreciate it, man. Sorry again, Chad, but thank you for sharing that information with us. I think it was very, very beneficial for myself included. And uh, you guys, there's a link down in the description for Ship Your Reptiles. If you've not read the information on their site yet and you ship reptiles, do yourself a favor and go check out the information there because I couldn't tell you exactly how. It, it's, it's amazing how much information is on that site. So if you have any questions at all, go check out that site. Guaranteed it's going to answer your questions. Thank you guys for tuning in today and checking this all out. I'm hoping Monday to have a, a new musical performance for you guys of some kind. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs>